A lot of people are talking about Harvey Elliott at the moment and for all the right reasons. This kid is too good to be playing with the England under 21 still. And do you know what I find completely mad is at 20 years of age, he's made over 100 appearances for Liverpool, but Southgate has not called him up once. That is not normal. That does not happen when a 20 year old has made over 100 appearances for a Liverpool, a Manchester United, an Arsenal level side, but not been picked by the England manager once. I think that's absolutely crazy. And that got me thinking, is Harvey Elliott becoming underrated? Because I think this season, particularly the second half of the season, he's really stepped up for Liverpool. And watching him for the England under-21s, he is too good for that team. He's a level above the players in the England 21s team. And he's got 20 goal contributions this season for club and country. He's having a very good season. He's really sort of moulding into maybe a Bernardo Silva-esque player. And a lot of people have been talking about Harvey Elliott at the moment. It feels like it's only a matter of time before he gets called off England. And there is a special player there. Now, you have to admit, he's got the hardest competition. He's playing as an advanced midfielder. He's got the Fodens. You could even say Palmer, Madison, Bellingham as his competition. And for some reason, you know, a bit of lag there. And for some reason, people are now turning it into a should it be Harvey Elliott and should it be Kobe Maynard debate? And I'm not saying this because I'm a Manchester United fan, but Kobe Maynard definitely deserves to be in that England starting 11. He's been brilliant. But Harvey Elliott also deserves to be there. But you can't really say Harvey Elliott or Kobe Maynard when Kobe Maynard's been playing as a six and Harvey Elliott's been playing as advanced eight. Carbon Phillips has dropped out. Carbon Phillips played as a six or next to Declan Rice. Kobe Maynard plays as a six or he could play next to Declan Rice. Do you know what I mean? Jordan Henderson's the weak spot. He'll play as a six or next to Declan Rice. Kobe Maynard plays as a six or next to Declan Rice. Harvey Elliott is a much more advanced player than uh, Kobe Maynard in terms of where he plays in the pitch. He plays a more sort of attacking minded role. He's more of Bernardo Silva. Kobe Maynard, I wouldn't say he was a Rodri. He's not a DM DM, but he, he's been playing as a six. So Kobe Maynard deserves to be in the England squad, but so does Harvey Elliott. And I think that Harvey Elliott is almost becoming underrated because, you know, we're talking about all the other Liverpool kids, you know, Connor Bradley, Kwanzaa. But wait, Harvey Elliott's 20. Harvey Elliott's younger. But I feel like because he's been around so long, he's becoming a little bit underrated. So in today's video, we're going to talk about Harvey Elliott, the kind of player that he is and all of that. And I'm, I'm just saying this as a Manchester United fan that has been blown away by Harvey Elliott this season, not just because he's got 20 goal contributions, not just the fact that he's played 100 times for Liverpool at his age, age 20. And also you've got to remember, he picked up that nasty injury. He could be on like 150 appearances if it wasn't for that nasty injury. But you've got to think the competition at Liverpool spots, you know, he would play on the right, he plays the right number eight. There is Soberslai, there is Gravenbush, there is Mohamed Salah. There is McAllister. There's a number of players at Liverpool. There is so much competition. The guy had a really nasty injury and he still picked up over 100 appearances at age 20. He's still got 20 goal contributions this season at age 20. He's still comfortably, you know, performing in a top Liverpool side. But this season he's doing it consistently. And it does feel weird that he's not been picked really by Southgate, especially when you look at what he can offer the team, versatility. Yes, he could play. You could technically do a midfield of uh, Rice, Elliot, Bellingham. You could. I, I think against the small teams, which are going to just sit back against England that aren't very good, it would work. I don't know if it would work against the big teams because Harvey Elliott, I think, is at his best when he has the freedom to not do so much defensive work and sort of operate in that right half space and unlock defences because he's so technically good and brilliant. But you've got to buy that and play centre mid. You can play as a 10. He can play as a right winger and he, he gets decent numbers if you look at him if you compare him if you look at his percentile numbers compared to midfielders you can see attacking wise you know he is just levels high above everyone else you can see metrics like progressive carries progressive passes how he always gets the ball forward it highlights him as a player he is a player that gets the ball a lot 96 percent of the touches he's the player that's always on the ball gets the ball a lot plays the ball forward makes things happen progressive passes progressive touches you can see his involvement you can see his accuracy you can see you know 95 percent of the shot creating actions 99 percent of for for assists he's someone that gets the ball a lot he is hungry to get on the ball when he gets the ball he moves it quickly he moves it forward he makes things happen you could compare him to wingers and attacking midfielders which i think is a little bit of an unfair comparison because he's mostly sort of played sort of as an eight rather than a 10 and, and, and a winger but even compared to wingers he again progressive passes pass completion passes attempts very much at the top and i thought well let's compare him to sort of the players that he might be competing with 
for, for, for England. Now, he's a different player to Cole Palmer, but Cole Palmer operates well in the right half space, can play as a 10, can play on the right. But you can see Harvey Elliott, Foden, Madison and Cole Palmer. Obviously, they're all kind of different players with slightly different roles and positions, but they're all quite similar in terms of they all average a nice amount of key passes. Harvey Elliott's in the blue, by the way. Uh, Harvey Elliott does beat them all for carrying uh, defensive actions and jewels. He's a little bit defensively better than them, which is fair because he plays a lot deeper than most of these guys. But you can see they're all kind of similar in that, you know, these guys, three guys being picked for England. And, and you can see that Harvey Elliott isn't, isn't far off and maybe deserving of that call. But what's really impressed me about Harvey Elliott is more his recent run. I remember he came off the bench and he, he made a few good impacts when I said Harvey Elliott is still better off the bench. I always thought he was still better off the bench because he was making good impacts. But I think he started, he's been involved with Liverpool's injury crisis lately. He's been playing mass amounts of minutes and been really good in those Sparta games. Very, very good three assists in the Premier League. Good. You know, that Manchester City game, you know, they dominated. I, I don't like to praise Liverpool, but I like to be honest, Liverpool dominated Manchester City and Harvey Elliott was one of the best players on the pitch. Hardest game, biggest game of the season, Manchester City was there. Even the Man United game, which we won for free. Harvey Elliott was fantastic. Harvey Elliott was, when he came on, Liverpool's best player. He scored the goal that Liverpool I thought had won the game and then, bosh, Ahmed and Garnaccio happened. But he was brilliant. Cup final again, putting in a shift. And, you know, he plays a lot lately, but his work rate, his work rate, his legs, his running ability. Let's talk about this. I'm always amazed with Harvey Elliott, how much he runs, how much he works, his intensity. I'm thinking, is he not exhausted? His running ability, his intensity, always wanting to get on the ball, always wanting to win the ball, win the ball back, make something happen, win the ball sack. His work rate, his pressing is elite. And that's what, if I'm a manager, Harvey Elliott's the kind of player I want. He works. He works hard. He's technically good. He's intelligent. He's got the mentality. He's got the athleticism. He's got the work rate. He's got the technical ability. That's what you get. Now, what I think makes Harvey Ellis stand out and why I think he's got potential to become a top class player. There are some great youngsters, but sometimes you look at a player with your eyes, the eye test, and you say their technical ability, their press resistance, their ability to carry the ball can set them apart. And why Harvey Ellis has that top, top potential higher potential than maybe someone like Kwanzaa, I and mean, I think Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa's good, different position, it's kind of hard to compare, is every time he gets the ball, he he, he wants the ball. He, he His ability to run into space, receive the ball, get the ball, use his body to turn out for a few players, keep the ball, retain the ball, play it forward, moving it quick, breaking down those uh, low blocks, line breaking passes, progressing the ball via carries, via line breaking passes quickly, breaking down low blocks, showing his understanding of the game, even moving the ball quickly with those quick one twos, his intricate movement, carrying the ball, dribbling around a few people, playing it out. I think when he can play in so many different areas, when he is, you know, very, very versatile, when he's tactically very intelligent and when Liverpool is struggling to break down the low block, there was times earlier in the season where Harvey Elliott came on and I personally thought that he unlocked the game in that sort of right half space as sort of a, a right-sided number eight. He can create from all zones, but when he gets in that right half space, he can break down those lines, he can break down that final line of defence and he could really help Liverpool move the ball quicker and, and, and look a little bit more threatening. And I think because he's press resistance, he has that low centre of gravity technique and he uses his body to glide across the pitch and he's got those short legs and kind of frame where he pushes people off you know I'm not going to compare him to Messi but when you think of frame Messi Bernardo Silva David Silva small legs short players but they were very good with their technical essence on the ball press resistant avoid the player dribble the ball and Harvey Elliott's got that he never hides from the ball he always runs into the perfect position to receive the ball. Again, as I said, you know, I showed his percentile statistics, one of the most touches per game. He's always sort of using his IQ to run into the right space. Whenever he get, whenever someone's on the ball, Harvey Elliott knows the space to run into to receive the ball. Even if he's got three defenders around, if he can then turn out of that, play the ball forward, move it quickly, get the tempo up for Liverpool. And by playing those quick passes, by breaking those lines, he makes Liverpool look really good. And he's only going to get better and he's only raw. Um, but this season, I can see a guy that's, progressing like I think Harvey Elliott I'm going to put him like I'm going to compare him to Garnacho which is a little weird gun comparison right now but Garnacho last season watching him he was a good player but he wasn't ready to start for United and I thought he's a good player but when he comes off the bench he's at his best and he makes an impact and I felt that with Harvey Elliott I thought he was a good player he's had some really good games but there's inconsistencies because he's 19 which is normally young but he might not be ready to start for Liverpool he's had to recently start for Liverpool and while I think that their best midfield for is Sobersline and McAllister Harvey Elliott has shown, yeah, no, he can start for Liverpool if there's an injury. He's able to. And that's what Garnacho has shown this season. Two players that were good last season, were good the season before, have immense potential. 
But every season they're getting better and every season they're becoming more important for their side. And you see that with Harvey Elliott. And you can see that this is a hardworking guy, but a guy that is progressing as a player, developing as a player, which is really important why Liverpool get a good coach because they've got so many to replace Klopp because Klopp is so good at getting the best out of players, but they need someone that's really going to get best out of Harvey Elliott. And I think they will. I think they're quite smart with their recruitment at Liverpool, but he moves the ball quickly, helps with build up, helps with ball progression, dictates team for some deep, deep. And if you look at things like progressive threat, you can see here, Harvey Elliott expected this is per 90 is right at the top. Curtis Jones at the top four. Um, accurate passes, you know, ball progression. Kurt Jones is one of the best in terms of actually making things happen. Harvey Elliott's one of the best. You compare him to other midfielders in the Premier League. And if you think you want something to happen, that's Harvey Elliott. He can dictate game, games from deep. His passing accuracy, his ability to pick the perfect way of pass, to pick out the right pass and help him build up is crucial. And he's very good, not just in the final phase of the pitch. And why I think he could play deeper for England with Rice and Bellingham against the smaller sides is because he does have the ability and build up to dictate play and, and break down teams. But I do think he's better when he's more advanced and all of that as well. But look, at 20 years of age, he has that skill to basically work really well with the right-sided winger. I've done a video on Saar. Saar of Tottenham plays as a right-sided number eight, and he's been my stand-up player for Tottenham this season because of his ability to link up with Pedro Porre more so than the right winger and make those uh, horizontal runs, horizontal runs, breaking down the phase, making it difficult to defend against Spurs. Harvey Elliott connects really well with the right winger, making those overlapping, underlapping runs horizontally, moving the ball forward, moving the ball forward, giving Salah an option, receiving the ball, getting in the half space, making something happen. And I think he's also someone that makes Salah. I think sometimes he can make Salah. Salah's always brilliant and Salah's always fantastic. But I think he's someone that really helps his right wing around. That's the way I'd look at it. And to summarise Harvey Elliott, mentally strong. The horrible injury he went through, was it a leg break or something? Lots of competition in that Liverpool squad. Keeps going, still getting into the team deservedly. Technically one of the best. Dribbling, breaking town teams, one of the best. I think his work rate and athleticism make him good. And I think the team looks really good when he plays because his work rate helps the team. He's a quality eight. He's versatile. They can play right wing. I think he gives a little bit of Bernardo Silver energy off, but he works his socks off to win the ball back. And I think he's a great player. So all in all, I do think that Harvey Elliott might be becoming an underrated player. And this is coming from a Man United fan because I think everyone knows how good he is. But I feel like because he's been around for a while and played so many games, people forget that no, this kid is 20. Like, this kid's only going to get better. Like, Liverpool fans speak about him, but actually, this season, he's been very good. Very good.